Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Maximilian. I'm working for Eclipse Source in Munich. Actually, I'm leading Eclipse Source in Munich. And in Munich, we are very much concerned with modeling. And normally, the kind of talks I give is more to people that are already familiar with modeling. And this is not the case today. So this talk is really addressing people that are not familiar with modeling yet or that are not very familiar with modeling that maybe you've never used it before. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you today what you can do with modeling and what the benefits are by building a very simple application following a very simple example. Um, the example is about getting married with a model, so the title is really twofold. The example is about marrying, but it's also about getting you married with modeling. Um, and normally if I, I do a talk like that, it's like with all the things, like with Burger King or McDonald's, the world is divided there, or beer or wine, the world is divided there. And also in these talks, the audience is divided. Normally what happens is I start talking about these modeling things and then about two minutes into the talk I, I notice that part of the audience looks more like that. <laughs> so today I'm trying to turn that around. If you're familiar with modeling, this will be very boring for you. This is really very basic stuff and you can go away. <laughs> Th thank you. <laughs> By the way, I just hired that guy <laughs> for doing that <laughs> to make it clear. Um, if you're not familiar with modeling, uh, I hope that I can explain to you what modeling is all about and what you can do with it. And I would encourage questions during the talk. It's a very, it's a very um, demo-oriented talk, so there's many things we will look at directly in, in the IDE. Um, also, when I talk about modeling, models, or when I see other talks about models, normally you, are, you should start with a slide that is full of a model. It, it should not even fit on the slide normally, and it's unreadable so that you can't see the model. But today we will start with something very simple. So for the wedding, you know that there is one very difficult problem among all the others, and that is the table seating arrangements. You can imagine that there's all sorts of problems. There's people that dislike each other, there's people that you don't like and you don't want them in your vicinity, all these kinds of things. There's gender uh, uh, rules for seating a woman next to a man and all these kinds of things that you, you have to take care of. And we just imagine that uh, we will build an application to, to, to make the seating arrangement. And what we need for that is one one data entity that is a table and one data entity that is a guest. And then I will group the table, the guests onto the tables. So I have an, what we call that a, a composition between the table and the guest. And of course every guest can only be in at most one table. I don't want a guest at two tables. So that's the, the basic idea of the example. So, what we are going to do right now is, I have uh, prepared something that is just downloading the Eclipse modeling tools. That's an Eclipse distribution that you can download from the Eclipse download page. I'm using the Luna release candidate for that today. And what we are going to do is, we are going to try to create Java objects. So, a Java object for a table and a Java object for a guest, so that we can have tables with guests. And then, following up on that, I will create instances of these Java objects in a test case so that we can see that our data model works and that we can do something useful with it. And as a follow-up, we will create even more Java entity objects. So, to dive into that, this is my IDE. And um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a special project it's not a normal plugin project, but it's an eCore modeling project. So what is eCore? eCore is the format in which EMF, the Eclipse Modeling Framework, defines models. And it's very much like the UML class diagram we looked at. So it basically defines classes and their attributes and their relations. 
So if I choose that, I have to choose a name for that. So And without explaining anything else, I'll just click next and next and next and finish. Because this is kind of the basic setup. That is good for almost all projects. And it'll set up a project for me. And this is a normal plugin, a normal bundle, um, with one exception. It contains this strange model folder here. And in the model folder, there's a bunch of files. And we will get to these files over the time. But the most important one is the eCore file. As I said already, the eCore file defines your model. And I'll open that up. This eCore editor is a bit ugly in the beginning. But it's very simple. It's a tree-based editor. And it allows you to create classes as children. So the only thing I have right now is a package. And all the concepts that we are now discovering, they're exactly like the Java concept. So now here I have a package wedding, and later on I will have a Java package wedding. And I want to have a class table. So the first thing that I will do is I will create a class. Note that everything in EMF is always prefixed with an E. So if you just strip that E, it just translates to the Java concept. So this is an, a class, if I create an E class. So now I have a Java class. If I double click something, it'll open up a property view, which is even more ugly, where I can enter, for example, a name for the class. So I'll name that class table. And I have a class table, but that's not very interesting because currently this class is empty. It, it doesn't have any attributes. So at least one attribute that I can think of that I want to have is a name for the table so that I can somehow refer to it. So I'll create an E attribute. And an E attribute will just be an attribute in your Java class. So later on, the table class will have one field that is, that's name, has a name name. And it has to have a type. And I want the name to be a string. So remember, everything starts with an E. So it's an E string. It even gives you, in, in EMF, it even tells you what kind of type it is going to be later on. So now I have a table with a name. And I can continue with that. So let's say I want to have a guest. I will create an E class for a guest. I will name it guest. The guest probably also has a name. I'll just copy that from the other E class. But the guest is probably more interesting. Guest, for example, has a date of birth. So I'll give the attribute the name date of birth. And the type of that attribute, in this case, is a date. Everything starts with an E, so it's an E date. Then probably the guest, which is an important probably property for a guest for seeding, we need to know whether the guest is single or not. So we will have an attribute single and an E boolean as a type. By the way, if you, I mean, there's many fields where you could fill something in, but these are like the most two important fields, and the others you can really discover on the way. As long as you leave everything to the default settings here, things will work out fine. Um, if you do something wrong or if you forget something, you even have some support for that. So let's just say I did not select a type here, which would be difficult for the code generation, because what can it do then? you can turn on validation. So I could validate that, and I get an error that I must set an, an E-type. So I'll set that to Boolean again, and I can validate that again. Could even turn on the validation continuously so that it live validates. Then, uh, as I already mentioned, I want to make sure that people I do not like that much are not seated too close to me, so I have an <coughs> attribute desired Oops. desired distance desired distance to me, 
And this is either a double or an int. I will just choose an int. OK, so all the, the basic types are there. That, that's pretty much straightforward. Um, now, what, what is a little bit more complicated is a gender. You could think that gender we should model with Boolean, maybe. But in, in our days, gender is more complicated. So I want to have male, female, and then unknown for it to, to uh, account for, for all the other things. So I want an enumeration for that. And an enumeration is just another type. So I can create an enum here. It's an e-enum, of course, again. And the enum has a name. So I will call that enum gender. And then I can define the values of the enum as children. So one enum literal will be female. One enum literal will be male. And one enum literal will be unknown. So now I've defined that new type, that enum type, and I can use it for an attribute now. So I'll create an attribute in the guest. I name it gender, and I'll assign a type, and I can now assign the gender type as well. OK. So that's, that's for simple attributes. Also, an enum is still a simple attribute. Now, more complicated stuff. Maybe I want to be able to say who's, who are the friends of that certain guest, because obviously I want to group friends in tables. And um, this is not a simple attribute anymore. This is a reference. I want to have, later on in the Java class, have a field that is a list of guests. And maybe the field's name will be friends. And this list of guests will contain the other guests which are friends of, of that particular guest. And for the sake of simplicity, but also reality, friend is a unidirectional relationship, as you might have noticed. Sometimes you are the friend of someone else, but they are not your friend or the other way around. So I'll model it that way also. And this time it's not an attribute, it's called a reference, an e-reference. So I'll create that. An e-reference also has a name, so I'll call that friends. And an e-reference also has a type, but now the type is not a simple type anymore. The type is now, the potential types are now all the e-classes that I've already created. So for example, guest. So this now sets the type to guest, so friend will later on reference other guests. And also, I might not only have one friend. Um, there is an upper bound attribute here, which tells me how many I might have. And I want to set that to unlimited. And um, here the Eclipse helps you a little bit. It tells you right here the maximum number of values that may occur. And minus one represents unbounded. Because I want to be able to have as many friends as, as I want to have. So um, that should be the basic model. Um, and it also introduces most of the basic concepts. There's only one thing missing now. Currently, guest has a number of simple attributes and friends, which refers to guest again. But there's no relationship between table and guest so far, because I want to be able to express that the table is seated with certain guests. So I need something else in table. And as you might have guessed, it's another reference. So I'll create another reference. And this reference I will call guests. And as we did before, we choose a type. And this time, the type is guest. So I want to point to guests here. As we did before, we want multiple guests at the table. So I'll make this unbounded. Note that also here in the icon, you can see that it's unbounded. And now I will change something else. Um, if you think about databases and delete on cascades, sometimes if I delete a certain entity, I want other entities to go away as well. If I delete a friend, then I don't want the, the, the referencing guest, which is a friend of his, to go away as well. He, he will stay at the wedding. But if I delete a table, the guests on the table will go away. 
at least that is what I will model right now. And that is called containment. So I will put that to true. So basically this means that a guest can now only be at most one table, and if the table is deleted, so are all the guests that are at that table. Okay, so that's all good, but how does that help? Now I have this eCore file with this editor, and how does that relate to Java at all? And that is where code generation comes into play. And that is also where the second file comes into play, the so-called gen model for generation model. The gen model is, has a lot of properties which are all not of big concern unless you want to tweak something little. Basically, this is a configuration file. It drives the code generation. You can put in things there like your Java version or the EMF runtime version and little properties about the generation of code. But I won't do that. I will just open the gen model as it is and I can right click it and say generate model code. Well, that's what we will do. And you notice that now we have an additional folder, the source folder. And in the source folder, I have now classes that have been generated for me. So let's look into that. We have the wedding folder, the wedding package, as we have modeled. And in the wedding package, I have a number of classes. Let's look at the most obvious ones first, table. So table now is an interface. It has a method getName. Sounds reasonable. It has a method set name, and it has a method that returns a list of guests. We will later on see how to manipulate the list of guests. You might have expected a setter. That's not the case. But otherwise, this is pretty much what I, what I would have expected from that. Note also that this interface extends something that is called eObject. It's a super interface that is, is there in EMF, um, and it allows you you can turn it off in, in the code generation if you really want pure Java objects, but it has a lot of benefits. It allows, for example, other EMF-based frameworks to understand what your object is about. Okay, so that's the table. If we look at the guest, that's not very much more surprising. There's also name, set name, get date of birth, set date of birth, is single, and set single, and so on. So it'll basically generate classes that just conform to the model that you had. Then there is a class for gender, which will just model that enumeration that we had. It's also pretty boring. And then a more interesting thing is we have a factory also. So every package that we've modeled, we have a factory, which is responsible for creating the things that we've modeled. So this factory is able to create a guest or a table. OK. So what I will do right now is I will uh, explore a little bit how you can work with that if you, in your code if you want to use that model. For that, I will generate test code. Um, there's really only one reason why you would ever generate the test code. You would never test the generated code. That's up to EMF, and it's very well tested. Uh, but let's say you change something in the code generation, then you might want to test if the generated stuff still conforms to what you're expecting. And I will just grab something out of, the, out of this um, test code and add a test case in here. This is a J on a test case. So I will have another test method, test API. And in this method, I will try to create a small test that setup of tables and guests. So let us first create a table. We've seen that we have this factory. So with the factory, it's a singleton. I can get an instance like that. With the factory, I can create a table. So now I have a table. I'll assign that to, to a variable. OK. Now let's set the name of the table. As expected, set name. Say that is the company table with all your colleagues. That's a table. Um, then we need guests to, seat, to, to be seated at the table. So I want to create a guest. Again, I can just use the wedding factory and also create a guest. 
In EMF, everything is done via a factory, which is also a nice pattern, so you can exchange your implementation because all the implementation details are hidden. So now I have a guest, and guest, the same thing, you can set a name. Okay. I can set all the other attributes of, of, a, of a guest. So let's say set single, Eugen is not a single. And now, coming back to the interesting part, I want to assign the, the guests to the different tables. So what I will do now is I will go to the table and get the guests of that table as a list. And in EMF, if you have a list type somewhere, you can just manipulate the list. So if I add something now to the list, it's, it's part of, of the guests list. That is why there is no setter. So if you would set multiple things, you can use add all. So I will add the guest to this table. Since it's a test case, maybe we should assert something. So here we could assert, for example, that the name of that table is indeed company table. So we use the getters also, table get name. Here we could assert that first the name of the guest is indeed Eugen. So and that he is really single now. Uh, he's not single. And then we could assert that the table really has that additional guest now in its list. So, oops, a little bit. So I will first assert that the size of the table's guest list is one. And then I could even look up Eugen in, in that list. So the expected list is uh, the expected values guest. And I will just get the first guest. OK. And I can just execute that as a J unit test. And it seems to work. So this is the API that you get from that. It's pretty simple, I would say. And it does all kinds of things already without you writing any code and without the opportunity to introduce any errors in that. And you might say, well, that is probably very simple code. But think about it. If you have bidirectional references where two classes point to each other and you want the two references to be in sync, think about the property that I told you. If I have a guest, he can only be at most one table. EMF will make sure that this happens. So if you put the guest into Onto another table, it will vanish from the first table. Think about the multiplicities. It can tell you whether multiplicity is violated. So there's really some more subtle details that you could, would have to program otherwise into that code. If we go back into the, into the model folder, um, there's one file that I haven't shown you yet. It's this file. This file can show a diagram of your model. So you can select here what entities you want to display on the diagram. So I want to display the table from my model and the guest. And it will show you this UML class diagram-like view on your model, if you like that. You can even edit it there, and it's being yeah, synchronized with the eCore model. So back to the example. So so you are you are organizing that wedding and um, my bride has given me this one task to make sure that the table arrangement somehow done properly, and that is what I've came up with. So I started the whole modeling thing, 
and have that nice modeling now and everything looks good. I have the code, but obviously this is not what she intended me to do. So this is a disaster. <laughs> because what do you do with that, right? You have the nice test cases, that's all good, but it doesn't help at all with the wedding. So what do we need? We need some kind of UI that we can make any use of the model, otherwise it's really useless. So let's do that. That's not that complicated. Let's continue and do that. So for creating a CRUD UI, um, you can install a framework that is called the EMF Client Platform. This helps you to create an out-of-the-box UI for your EMF models. You install that into your target, or in my case, the EMF Client Platform ships with Luna, so I already have it in my target. So downloading the modeling tools package will do all the work. And with that EMF Client Platform, we will create the entities in a UI, and yeah, as a follow-up, I will. what you could do with EMF Client Platform is customize the UI, the layout of the UI, and add other controls to the UI, or provide your totally own view onto the EMF model. But as a starting point, that's already good enough. So what I will do for that is I will add a new run configuration. It's an Eclipse application. And I will call it, I don't know, CRUD editor. And instead of running the IDE product, I will run the ECP application product, which ships with this EMF client platform. And I would just run that. Um, what that does now is, it has a lot of unnecessary plugins because I just didn't bother about pretty uh, configuring that properly. Um, but what it does is, it also picks up the uh, modeling package, the modeling plugins that I have in my, um, in my IDE and puts it into, into this running target. Um, by the way, what I didn't do, it's a mistake, um, I only generated the modeling plugin so far, but in terms of UI, there is more stuff that EMF can generate. Think about if you want to have a tree, you need to define what are the children of things, what are the icon of different things, what are the labels. And for that to happen, you can generate some more things. It's called the edit plugin. You can generate the edit code. And with that edit plugin, the EMF client platform now knows how, what, what icon the table has. You might ask, where does this icon come from? It's just been generated as well. We will see it. It's just a little diamond. But you get the idea. You can replace the icon, of course, later on. Everything is built in a way that it works out of the box in the beginning with sensible defaults. So for example, the default for a label will just be the name of the table and the name of the guest, just because it's the first string attribute. OK, so now the EMF client platform. That gives you a UI for, for these models. It consists on the left-hand side of a tree-like view. In that, I can create a new project. I will do that. So it's the, the wedding project. And in a project, you can create the entities that we have modeled. So in the project, I can create the guests and so on. But somehow, the EMF client platform needs to know which models you want to create entities for. And I can select that here. In a typical modeling tools edition, there's a lot of models in there that we're not interested in. But there's also the wedding model, so I will choose that. And if I create a new model element, now I'm offered exactly the two things that I can create, a table and a guest. So I create a table, and I get an editor for that that displays all the properties that I have defined, just one after another. There's no special layout for that yet. You could do it, but it's, it's just the default currently. So I could um, have the company table here as an example. It's also being displayed here in a tree. The label always consists of the type and the name. And I can add guests to the table. Remember that I said that a guest is, is um, strictly tied to the table? That is why EMF now knows that I can have, that, that guests are, so to say, children of a table. 
I can add guests to the table, to add two guests. I can edit the guests. So this is Eugen. And see if I, if the cursor jumps out of that field, if I have the lost focus, it's updated in the model. And you see that also the table, uh, the, the tree view now reflects what, what is happening. Can have another guest here, that is uh, maybe Edgar. And well, I can say that Edgar is a friend of Eugen. Add him here. All these kinds of things. Set a date of birth. So you get the idea. There is basic controls for all the different types. So for string, date, boolean, integer, and so on. Also for the, um, for the references. So you can have, you have a control for multi-references or for single references. And you can already edit stuff. You can even do things like adding a second table here and then dragging the guests over. So I don't know, that is the bright table and Eugen will be seated here. And I just drag him in here. And what you've just seen is also due to what we've modeled because EMF knows that Eugen can only be part of one table, so if I drag him over, he will not be, he will not be copied and be on two tables. He will be drag and dropped, so he will be cut and paste instead. Yeah. Can you tell me again the run configuration? The run configuration, yeah. The only thing, I, mean, I set up nothing, so I'm starting all the plugins yeah. of the current target platform, which is the modeling tools itself. The only thing I did is I chose a different product. Okay. So I chose the ECP product, which basically defines that I have these three views, the model explorer, the editor, and, and the repository. So that's a little better now. So we can at least do something with the strange stuff the, uh, the, that, that I have done. And the bride is a little bit more relaxed about that. Um, just technically, if we look at that, just that you get a very rough idea, um, there is EMF is the underlying layer, it's a runtime. And the EMF runtime does things like, for example, providing labels or providing the children in the tree, they're called content providers. EMF also offers things like commands. So if I type something into the field and, and the focus out occurs, a command is being issued on the command stack that the name now changes from empty to Eugen, for example. And it also provides the description of what we've modeled, the description of the entities. Because remember, we didn't program anything for, for the editors, so somehow the editor must be aware what a table is, and indeed it is. So a table describes itself with the EMF runtime. The editor can query the table. A little bit comparable to, EM, to, to Java reflection, but more sophisticated. So any E object, which is the super type of everything you generate, you can ask for what is the name of your class? What are the attributes that you offer? What are the multiplicities of the reference that you offer? What type are they of? And so on. And that is the way you have to imagine the editor works. It asks the thing first, what are you? You are a table. What attributes do you have? You have one name and that's it. Okay, then I will just display a label with the name name and a text box for, for editing the string. And I'll bind that to your, to your uh, name string. And on top of that, we have this layer, which is in the EMF client platform, which provides a tree viewer. Tree viewer, for example, makes use of the label and content provider, which provides undo redo based on the commands of, of EMF, and which provides this form-based UI, which uses the entity description to read in. So it's a layer on, on top of EMF to make things a little bit simpler in the beginning. Interesting. <laughs> so. That seems not totally useless. And now, of course, something else happens. The bride mate uh, calls in, and he, of course, wants to see the, the seating arrangement. And he is not, he's in a remote location, 
So this is not any good. Now we have to send around these uh, strange files that are being generated here and that doesn't make any sense. So we have to add something else. That is collaboration. Um, what I've done already, I've installed EMF store into the target because it ships with the, it ships with Luna. And what you can do with it is you can share instances of, of what we've just created. I will just quickly show that. So, it's already in here in this model repository view. I will start a local server. So this is now a server that will serve the instances of this wedding project. And now I can share the wedding to that server and thereby serve other users that also want to work on that. What I won't have time to show right now is that you, I will check out an independent copy of, of that. What you can do with that is you can work like with SVN with that. So I can change something here. Then I can commit that to the server and I can update on another client. Let's just pretend this is the other client. It will also be able to handle conflicts. So let's say you both change the name of the table. You have a conflict. You need to decide which name the table should actually have. So trunk, that sounds like SVN, not Git? Well, yeah. <laughs> Could be both. Um, actually, it it's, uh, behaves a lot like Git internally because it really uh, pushes around the changes and has the notion of, of streams rather than, than branches. Good. Um, I, what I didn't show you now is the, the, cust the merging. You can do that with, with this technology. Um, so you can have collaboration on the models quite simply. Now, um, now the uh, bridesmaid also um, comes in and um, she needs graphical viewing for that. So she wants to see the table arrangement. What I've done for that is I've, um, I've used Graffiti, which is a framework to display EMF entities. And I will just show you a graphical view of the instances. It's quite simple to, to create such an editor. Uh, this is a graphical editor of the, of the same setup. All the editors that, that we have seen are built with one of these two, either Graffiti or GMF. So that's also quite straightforward to build something like that. And then finally, um, the party starts. But uh, there's many people there, and we have to somehow take orders. So we want to extend the system now at runtime to add more stuff. And that's also quite simple to do. Um, you can add new types to your model at any time, and the, the application will just pick it up because it understands the EMF uh, models. I will not be able to do that due to time reasons now, but I could just add another class, order, and then I can edit orders, and I can add orders to the project. Um, EMF itself. Um, if, you, if you got interested now in EMF, there's a, an EMF tutorial um, that I have written. <laughs> so a little bit of marketing there. Uh, it gives you the very basics of EMF. It explains to you how EMF is used. A good source for information is also the EMF news groups. Uh, Ed Merckx, who uh, is the inventor of EMF, the Ed Merckx framework, um, he will answer every question you have there. It, even if it sounds stupid or whatever, he will answer that question. And that, uh, uh, um, what happened there is you have a, a real big archive of any potential question you could have ever asked in the last uh, eight years. So there, if you search in the news group, you'll find an answer to your question very likely without even having to, to ask it. And then there's a lot of EMF-related technologies, which is really the, the biggest advantage of EMF. There's technologies to uh, have a UI, to have a backend, to store it into a database, to send it over the network, all these kinds of things, because the entities are self-descriptive. Thank you very much. <laughs>